<laughs> well, welcome everybody to Faith, Family, and Friends from Pastor Ralph from here in Southwest Michigan, near uh, one of the Great Lakes, Lake Michigan. And we are uh, Zooming to Florida with our good friend, Steve Camp, Pastor S.J. Camp. Some of you may remember <laughs> his music. I'm just going to give you a little taste. And I don't know how Zoom doesn't do real good with audio, but some of you might remember this song. And we'll see if it plays from his album, Doing My Best, back in 1990, one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Run to the battle. That makes you just want to keep playing it. <laughs> oh, anyway, that, that was so good, Steve. You had a slew of albums <clears throat> from 78. Um, and then you had, took quite a hiatus. Um, 20 years, I think. In between, there was a compilation. But uh, before we get to your music, um, let me just give a, a folks that don't know your music that are younger than we are. My wife is with me here tonight. Um, just going to read this off Christian Music Archive. Uh, Steve Camp, prominent American Dove Award and Grammy Award nominated con contemporary music artist, CCM we call it, with an adult contemporary pop sound uh, in the 90s and 80s, sold more than a million albums. Steve has written or co-written 21 number one singles since his debut album in 1978. Um, and it goes on, but uh, Steve... You worked with a lot of people that I didn't realize you'd worked with. Some who's who've been on our show, uh, Rob Frazier from Petra, uh, Scott Wesley Brown, uh, just a host of others. But I, I want to just thank you, as I have with some of our other guests that we, I kind of cut my Christian or discipleship mentoring teeth on. In lieu of a human mm. there, when you're lonely and you're kind of, uh, you're still serving the Lord, but you need something to keep you going but, uh, besides the word of God, it was CCM music that keep, kept me going and actually taught me so many things. It's how I come back uh -huh. to Christ. And uh, your music, um, I remember spinning the, the record on the top of a mountain in the Berkshire Hills of uh, Massachusetts and um, playing it in, at Evangel in Springfield, Missouri, some of your hits. So tell us how, you have one album that was secular and then you had a, a, a salvation experience. Did you come back from to the Lord? Uh, give us a um, sense of how your spiritual journey kind of went. Well, sure. And thank you for having me on here tonight. Are you are you hearing me okay? Oh, good. Good. Yeah, All right. Ex excellent. Uh, I grew up in Wheaton, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Uh, people know it as the home of Wheaton College, the Billy Graham Center. We call it the Holy City, the Vatican II. Uh, yeah. But growing up, um, when I was 19, I started to write songs. It was I came to Christ when I was 17 in the height of the Jesus movement that was going on. And I tell you, it was a great time, but we had home Bible studies. A lot of us as teenagers were meeting in people's basements and wow. churches on Friday night at our home church at Wheaton Bible. Pastor uh -huh. Chris allowed us to meet at midnight on friday night we'd stay all their day saturday we'd play songs we had people come in from the area all these kids and they were coming to know the lord and it was really great music was the tool you know he used that as such a great catalyst but uh when i was uh 19 i moved out to la uh for a time 20 years old uh i had met larry norman and second chapter of Acts and a lot of those guys early on, Larry became kind of a mentor for me, especially in songwriting in my mm -hmm. musical journey. And it was in 75 that I, 1975, that I got a deal with CBS, a uh, division of CBS called Mums. And Steppenwolf was on yeah. that label, uh, Albert Hammond and other artists. I had back then, it's not like today, you released a single. If that started to do well, you'd go back in while the single was playing and make a record over the next month. Budgets were low. Mm -hmm. uh, but during that time, Mums lost his distribution. Long story short, Clive Davis, 
uh, had picked up the mums artist and he listened to my songs and he said, Steve, I don't know if you're aware of this, but all your songs talk about Jesus, except for this one. And I said, well, listen, I'm happy to write you the best love songs I can. Not a problem for a Christian to do that. If scripture speaks to all of life, we, our music can speak to all of life, right? But I told him, I said, well, I'll, I'll write you the best love songs but I want, that I can, but I also want to sing my straight on gospel songs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we decided that wasn't a good fit at that time. Again, 75, not a lot of CCM being done then. And uh, so I I got a deal two years later in 1977 with Word Records Mm -hmm. and did four albums for them and then left them. And I believe it was 1982. I did about nine or 10 albums for Sparrow. And then uh, Warner Alliance had just formed, they were the gospel division of Warner Brothers, and a good friend of mine, uh, Neil Joseph, who was head of Word Records back in the day, uh, we got talking and I ended up doing a few albums, uh, Heaven by Storm and Mercy in the Wilderness Mm -hmm. in 94, in 95, and uh, then I came out with a little document called The 107 Theses. That was a clarion call to challenge the CCM industry from all the secular ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, I have no problem with distribution being owned by non-Christians, but when secular heads of multinational corporations mm-hmm. want to buy up Christian music and turn Jesus into a widget, mm-hmm. we had some problems. Yes. And I met some of these, <clears throat> these uh, non-Christian executives uh, back in, in that day at various country Western parties and, mm-hmm. you know, gatherings around Nashville. And they said, are you the kid that's a thorn in my side? And I <laughs> said, well, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be, but I said, listen, you know, you've got to be aware there's a spiritual component to what we do. It's different than country. It's different than r and mm-hmm. I'm not talking style now, but content. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, if you're talking distribution, like it's like hiring FedEx. You take the product from one point to another point. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about altering the content Mm -hmm. and marketing Jesus as, as just another cheap retail merchandise, Mm -hmm. uh, I said, I have to warn you guys, you're, you're going to be under the judgment of God. He would never allow that. And so I put out this document. We sent 10,000 copies all around the country. And it began with my own repentance, yes, you know, yeah. and, uh, letter, yeah. you know, I, I had a good, I had a strong message all those years, but my methods uh, of, of even charging tickets for people to come to a local church to hear me sing or to mm-hmm. see worship or the gospel presented, I needed to repent of. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I got away, got threw away, as it were, all the ticket prices and that kind of thing and started to open up for whatever people could afford, meaning for free. And it was a love offering concert, whether we were to, at a college or a local church. And there was a process in that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I came out, you know, years later with a few independent projects. But that really, brother, was a, a mm-hmm. kind of a Donnybrook because labels that I'd been with literally threw away all my music products. So I couldn't order any product. Um, Radio stations were playing the songs, uh, concert organizers, promoters were saying, Steve, we love you. We believe in what you're doing, but if we support you, uh, we were told we're going to lose the tour for XYZ artists. And that's our whole year if we lose them. Mm -hmm. So it really started to change overnight. Yeah. Gradually through the years, I uh, I still continued on with local churches. Mm-hmm. Uh, I became part of the staff of John MacArthur's church uh, in the late 90s for about a year and a half. Came back to Nashville, uh, loved the church. I was raised in the church, so I'm a churchman at heart. Yeah. And I so appreciate Larry not only helping me with my songwriting early on, but also men like Stephen Olford and MacArthur and R.C. Sproul and these men uh, that would invest into my life spiritually. Mm -hmm. So it was from there that I started a phase into the local church and current date, I became a pastor here, lead pastor of the Cross Church in Palm City, Florida. So anytime you want to break from Michigan snow, man, come on down. We'd love to, we'd love to have you, but, but that's, 
I've been serving there since 2000 here since 2009 okay. uh, for the last 13 and a half years, but I'm recording again and, and the Lord has been faithful through it all. So okay. uh, at, at, at 67, I'm, uh, Still doing I'm it. doing both works and just trusting yeah. the Lord for it all. So we'll see Amen. what happens. So where, where is your church located there in Florida? We're on the East Coast. Oh. Uh, it's called the Treasure Coast. If you're up in Orlando, we're about a straight two hour south on uh, 95 coming okay. into the area. We're just about, um, say, 45 minutes. Well, maybe an hour north of Fort Lauderdale okay. and uh, so forth. So we're right in the middle there. Uh -huh. And uh, Stewart is a little bit bigger community uh, in the area. Uh -huh. But I tell you, my wife is from Michigan. I don't know oh. if you know that, well, but she grew up. Oh, oh, great. She I'm grew here. up. She yeah. grew up in Lansing uh -huh. and uh, was a school teacher there. And she's a graduate of Juilliard in New York and violin. And uh, so I'm just happy she allows me to get on the same platform and, yeah. you know, Play with her musically she's so excellent at what she does but uh we just fell in love with the area mm. uh we never considered being floridians uh but i tell you there's a there's a real ministry here mm. uh churches tend to be smaller than in nashville where if you plant a church tomorrow you could have a thousand people come yeah, yeah. uh we're a church a smaller congregation but it's a it's a solid healthy church right. and yeah. it's called the cross our our website is crosschurch.net uh -huh. and and we're going through a, a website rebuild right now so uh, -huh. uh you know uh give us a few weeks uh to yeah. to get on but crosschurch.net is our address and uh again we have people come through and sometimes man it's fun they'll say hey there's a guy that has the same name as you <laughs> that sings yeah. christian music yeah. And, uh, and, you know, and I'm like, yeah, well, that's me. And they said, you're the pastor here. And we've never advertised that. I didn't want it to be no. about that, right. no. but, uh, it's been fun. It's been a great journey and, uh, we're a solid mm -hmm. church and biblical exposition. And at the same time, uh, we're trying to use the art still mm -hmm. in a way to communicate the gospel. So it's that's good. Powerful. Steve, let me, let me just, uh, go back to your songwriting and then yeah. um, how it's uh, developed through the years and at, whether it's different now than when you first started. But again, your songs are both intimate. Um, he's all I need. I mean, that uh, I remember that one well, but then run to the battle, very convicting. If you're hungry for God and you want more of God, you don't shy away from that kind of conviction. The challenge for me, and I think so many others, brothers and sisters in Christ, when you hear that song, they want to run. After hearing that yeah. song, they spiritually want to run. So how did those songs come to you back then? Um, and maybe you could take us through the journey of what that what it was like organically, the changes, the fluctuations. And maybe now uh, I would think that your writing now might be more reflective, but still convicting and solid biblically. How would you describe it? You know, that's a great question. Uh, the song in particular, Run of the Battle, I wrote on a hillside in England. Uh, looking over a hillside of sheep, I was doing a concert tour called New Heart for the Nation. Mm -hmm. And it was 54 concerts in 18 days. Oh, my goodness. So I was doing three con three concerts a day. And by the third or fourth day, I was exhausted. I and I thought, Lord, I, I need to run to the battle. We were ministering to everything from soup kitchen lines uh -huh. to the skinheads and treads. Yeah. Uh, downtown in London to ending up doing a command performance for the Royal family with a few other artists for wow. uh, save the children, princess uh -huh. Anne's hunger relief organization. That was a great privilege to meet them. Mm -hmm. But uh, all through that in all those different things, I thought I need a, a, a song. That's a, a war cry as mm -hmm. it were. Yeah. And uh, I was reading the life of CT stud. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was a great businessman and he sold it all, went to China and he opened his book with a little quote and says, people want to live within the sound of church and chapel bell, mm -hmm. but I want to run a mission a yard from the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. And I thought, there's my opening yeah. statement to this song. God's and like, it took, here it is. 
it yeah and it took about uh five minutes to write it oh my and i sang it every day there and it became uh the one of the theme songs on uh the uh the album for word record in 1977 released early in 78 okay. um so that just kind of came lyrics and melody together being inspired by that and reading the word mm -hmm. uh during that time i wrote a song i started a song called if i were a singer uh that i re-recorded on desiring god and it was uh written with larry norman mm -hmm. um i had started it i said larry let's jump in on this together help me finish this one of the first songs i ever wrote and uh we just had a great time. We we were like brothers together. We became very, very good friends for about 10 years and did a lot of concert work together. But Larry was uh, he was kind of the poet laureate of Christian music, even in secular music. He had such a huge, insightful voice into the times. And he really kind of mentored me on how to structure a song. So for me, even now on this new album, Neighbors in the Age of Rage, that will be coming out hopefully in the next six weeks or so, uh, the songs are, are still written in a similar way. I, I tend to write lyric and music together okay. uh, and get an idea for a song. And it comes out of, of I'm a very voracious reader of the word uh -huh. and and of different books. I want to be like the men of Issachar and understand the times yes. and at the yeah. same way relate biblical worldview yes. through through the lyrics to the song so neighbors in an age of rage it's dealing with all the woke crt mm -hmm. social justice uh family issues racism all of it on this mm -hmm. album it's a different album for me and mm -hmm. i hope people will understand the heart behind it yeah. but the songs would begin that way. And I've written with my producer, Tim Miner on this record. I've even written with a couple of my sons oh, uh, on this album. Yeah, that was a real privilege. Yeah. But I, I like to I like to figure out the theme and have an idea musically. And for me, it's hand in glove. Those two things yeah. fit together. Yeah. Very rarely will I write an entire lyric and then look for a melody or write a melody and not have any idea lyrically. So in the same way, the pattern has remained all these years. Wow. Uh, but I appreciated your thought on this. Some of the music is more reflective at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Um, some of the music is even more confrontational. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as you get older, you realize the frailty of your life mm -hmm. and, and it produces a boldness. I have found even more so than when I was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the boldness when I was younger could be deemed under certain circumstances as careless. Now, hopefully the boldness has an intensity and urgency and a wisdom yes. that age in the crucible of grace affords by God's grace. That's so that's how I'm, that's how I'm working now with it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been a thrill. I, I was asking Tim, uh, we've been taking six and a half years on this record. I've raised the money as we've gone along. Okay. So it's all paid for. I don't have a label. I couldn't I couldn't record 90% of these songs if I was signed to a record company right now. It'd be too wow. hot for them to deal yeah. with. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so we're trusting the Lord of Lord, it's your I feel like a, a little kid with five loaves and a couple of fish <laughs> and saying there's a hillside out there we want to reach. Take this album as a meal for somebody mm -hmm. and use it to feed them yeah. so i don't know how we're going to do this it's i would covet your prayers in it but um sure. but the big the biggest thing is is like I've, I've got a song on here called be the village and it was a song that i wrote while holding my granddaughter who's who was just a year old at that time and cool. and we watch her at night sometimes and i would you know, sing this little melody to her that I put lyrics to it. And it turns out to be a little lullaby oh, for sweet. parents. Oh, so there's ref there's reflective stuff there, but then there's also some very, uh, we do have a song called Rage on here and it's dealing with every single issue you could think of. And so there's both on here. Some of it's reflective. Some of it is opinion. Some of it is the word of God put into song some of its praise and worship some of its oh, the great american novel on the on what's going on in society so uh -huh. the the pattern hasn't changed mm 
-hmm. But I tell you, I appreciate what you were saying there. It, it, at this stage of my life, it is a little more reflective mm -hmm. and, and hopefully just as creative. Amen. Well, with, when we talk to people like, uh, we had uh, Richie Ferry on, we've had oh, that's uh, brilliant. Scott Wesley Brown, others who are about our age and they're in that time of their life where they're wondering, what is it you want me to do? And I want to do it. I want to, I want to end it in a flame of fire. I don't want to just Peter out, Lord. And, and the Lord is showing different ones what he wants them to do. And I think with Scott Wesley Brown, with whom you worked with a, a number of years ago, I believe. I don't know if it was backup vocals or writing with him or I read that somewhere. No, you know, we just we were just friends mm -hmm. uh early on. Okay. And uh, there was a, a lot of guys like that. Uh worked with Keith Thomas as a producer. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've been I've been so privileged to work uh good friends with keith green back in yes. the day and uh we did a lot of festivals and things together uh you know there's an artist community uh mm -hmm. on this current album i want you to know uh phil kagi came on and played oh, uh great. two or three solos yes. and just ripped it up yeah. he was just yeah. brilliant yeah. and some great singers and studio musicians again my producer tim minor just uh -huh. brilliant talent but um you know a lot of the artists um, I didn't write with a lot of the artists, probably Rob Frazier. He and I have known each other since I've been 19. So, uh -huh. wow. you know, that's a that's a long that's run there, uh, 48 years. And we've written and recorded uh, a few hundred songs. So uh -huh. uh, that's been a real blessing. Even right. now, Rob and I co-wrote a few songs on this album. album. And uh, so, you know, that's the thing. I guess most of the artist relationship, brother, I've had throughout the years, haven't been so much in writing, but in performing at various events together uh -huh. or festivals. And then we get to catch up. You know, we just saw the other day, Armin Morales, age 90, mm -hmm. uh, the founder of the Imperials. They sang with Elvis and I got to know Armin pretty good. We weren't involved in a daily friendship, that kind of thing, but we were artists together that did a lot of festivals together. Russ Taff was one yeah. of those great singers back then. And, mm -hmm. and the guys from Petra, Shirley and different ones. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you look back with fondness to yeah. those men and even like the late Andre Crouch yes. um, was, a, became a dear friend, Larry Norman, Randy Stonehill. Mm -hmm. uh, those artists, Jamie Owens, Collins, mm -hmm. um, I so respect them all deeply and to their contribution in ministry, in music, in creativity. I mean, think of a guy like Bob Carlyle or Brian Duncan. I mean, two of the finest singers, I don't care what genre of music, right. they, they are absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. in their tone. Same with Russ Taff, mm -hmm. uh, Phil Kagi, one of the great guitarists. It doesn't matter the genre of music of all time. Yeah. And we see this in the studio as well amazing people i've been privileged to do a few records with michael lomardian mm. and michael had done some records but he he kind of helped really create the steely dan sound and uh -huh. he's produced hundreds of hit records throughout the years and uh, so appreciate this guy he's a great artist a great keyboardist an amazing producer mm -hmm. and i have to pinch myself i have you know when walking into a studio and I did a record with Jeff Beccaro, who drummed for Toto, and wow. Leland Sklar, who's worked with everyone from Springsteen to James Taylor, and all, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of hit records. And these great studio musicians, I have to pinch myself half the time and say, <laughs> how did I get invited to this party? You and know? By the grace of God. And <laughs> yeah, by the grace of God. And so it's been a humbling journey that way mm -hmm. but with scott wesley and a lot of those wonderful artists it's really been through friendship and common Amen. uh public appearances in churches or festivals or bible conferences mm -hmm. and uh, praise the lord he still has many of us still around to do a little bit more work for him and, and still serving the lord in a strong way and while yeah. we're seeing a great i think in my estimation and knowing the lord for a number of years myself falling away from the faith uh, around yeah. us and, and people uh, touting theologies that are totally unbiblical and not batting an eye about it. And um, I, did, I do want to ask you, 
this though. Yeah. I listened to Liberty Road on the new album. From oh, the yeah. Website, and I was yeah. going to tell you in the middle there, there's this wicked good guitar lick. Is that Phil Kiggy? You know, third way Phil, through. Uh, Phil was not on that song, but there's oh. a guy named Tom Yankin. Uh -huh. And Tom is a Christian guy, but I, one of the most gifted guys, he sings amazing. He plays guitar amazing. He's part of a brand new band called Generation Radio, which uh, Jason Sheff, a friend of mine, formerly with the band Chicago. Uh, mm -hmm. You have Chris Rodriguez. And um, I was so honored to work with Chris years ago on touring. But this guy's an amazing singer, mm -hmm. songwriter, guitar player. Uh, you know, you have they're like the new Toto, the former drummer of Journey is in that band. Oh. Well, Tom, Tom plays guitar. He is in that band and just brilliant. And so he came in the studio, had just met him. He sang so amazing. Oh. And, and then he played acoustic guitar in that song and the electric solo on that song. Uh -huh. And he just nailed it. So if, if you get on YouTube and you want to hear a brand new band, Generation Radio. They are yeah. unbelievable. Uh, they're, they're just probably the new Toto, the new great band that's come on. Amazing vocals, heartfelt performances. And, uh, you know, uh, some of these guys know the Lord as well. Uh, but they're amazingly gifted guys. And I've been able to work with some of them. Uh, if Tom, if you ever hear this, what a pleasure it was to have you on this record. And he played unbelievable. But that that man loves the Lord. He'd been out with Rascal Flats and other people for a long time. Yeah, Tom, Tom is one of those guys. He's truly a gem in Nashville and one of the most gifted guys in rock and roll today. That's awesome. So where, where do you think, as we uh, kind of wrap things up here and maybe think about uh, having yeah. you on again, maybe doing a part two and Talking about answering and, and so forth. Um, be honored to. Yeah, it would be good because uh, this whole COVID thing, we don't shy away from anything um, controversial here. If God leads us to say it, we're going to say it. Um, yeah. Truth and love, right? But if you look back uh, and you're looking at music now, and I've been privileged to ask this question to a number of artists uh, that we've had on our show, where do you see it going? We know that the worship movement came in and, and and most of the folks that I've talked to are really glad about that, um, that they're, they believe it was of God. You don't see the personal testimony in CCM music that you used to see. Um, yeah. Or um, of course you had the ballads and you had the intimate prayer songs too. Um, so where do you think um, Christian music is at this point um, and where maybe it's going down the road? Well, I appreciate the question and I'll, I'll be sensitive on how I answer this, but I do want to give, uh, I think, a, 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 sh a stunning example of what I'm referring to. You're mm -hmm. right. Worship uh, music is is there biblically to lead people in worship to the Lord. It's usually done in the context of church and so mm -hmm. forth. I love what Psalm 119.54 says, thy statutes are my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. His word our music, his theology, our doxology, his statutes, our songs. Mm. And he says, this is done in the house of our pilgrimage. In other words, as we're making our earthly journey mm. to the Lord, this is done. Well, we have a heavenly song to sing, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a gift in the church. Worship is a gift for the church. What I'm, what I'm really concerned about today is what you have is a worship and praise movement that's become entertainment. Yeah. People are being asked to pay $50, $100, $150 yeah. that's, that's uh, to come to a worship event. Yeah. And what's crazy is, as you know, <laughs> they're, they're building that ticket price on, on how accessible you get to be with them. If you want to meet with them before the concert, get an autograph here at you know, 150 bucks, yeah. man, I didn't pay 50 bucks to see Springsteen. I mean, what's going right. on here? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and so I'm concerned that mm -hmm. worship music has now become a form of entertainment yeah. that you're charging money for. Yeah. Uh, that, that violates the mandate of scripture. Freely we have received, freely mm -hmm. we should give. That's yeah. number one. Yeah. 
Yep. Number two, I'm really concerned. Uh, I'll say for a guy like Chris Tomlin, Chris has written some amazing songs mm -hmm. and I don't doubt he's a, a gifted man. And we've used much of his music here at the church. We're no longer using it until a change happens. And it's because of this. You had mentioned it, mm -hmm. that a lot of the music hasn't become doctrinally discerning. Mm -hmm. and Chris has chosen, he came out, I couldn't believe it, someone sent me links to his own website with guys like Stephen Furtick and Bill Johnson with Bethel um, and Joyce Meyer and other, these, these people, they may be nice people, I don't know, but they are heretics. They are embracing and teaching unsound doctrine, and Chris is touring with them all and celebrating them he's on tbn the trinity broadcasting network which is a network where most of their preachers deny the trinity i mean how do you how do you justify that right. it i am really i'm deeply concerned for this man and i saw some posts come up and again i'm not trying to dog chris here tonight i'm right. simply using this as a is a is a thing uh is an example for us is that when we measure the word of god in light of the songs it's not only the message that counts but it's the methods and it's the manner in which we do it mm -hmm. ministry has to it's who we partner with as well it speaks much about who we are in the lord mm -hmm. none of us have arrived none of us are perfect none of us are sinless so let's get that off the table immediately mm -hmm. we are called not to be sinless but we are called to be faithful right and i i've sent some messages to chris saying brother re-examine these things mm -hmm. re-examine if you're singing with td jakes and people that deny the trinity deny the god of the bible again td may be a very nice man but when we see people move away from sound doctrine mm -hmm. then they are tending to feast on anything mm -hmm. that is going to mention jesus and can draw a crowd yeah. that's where we're at today i pray that ccm music becomes discerning once again mm -hmm. on who it's aligning with mm -hmm. on the quality of the message of the song and that they would take the time not to again hand out an award i yeah. i was against the dove awards 40 years ago so yeah. this is nothing new mm -hmm. but we should have a higher platform than trying to mirror the Grammys. Yeah, uh, we funny. should be able to give out our songs and our music mm -hmm. and do something fresh and different. But when people charge heavy ticket prices mm -hmm. to have people simply turn worship music into a form of entertainment, yeah. man, that is, that is a very, very dangerous place to be. And that's what my concern is to your yeah. question yeah. on Christian music today. Well, I asked the question and I, I sensed that I would get that kind of an answer or something like that. But I th mm. the verse that I think about, and Jesus mentioned in Matthew 24, he talked about the end times as that men yeah. are lovers of themselves. And I see that kind of uh, mentality of flowing into the church. It's all about me, you know, whether yeah. it's cell phone or the image of the, it, it's instead of about God and what he's done for me. And yeah, I, that's right. Well, I tell you, um, if I may, I know we're closing up here. Uh, I would covet people's prayers for my own life in this. Uh, to stay faithful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But one of my, my, one of my life verses, I know you probably have several as well, mm -hmm. but one of my life verses is found in Acts chapter 20 and in uh, verse 24. And here is the apostle Paul saying this in a very, very direct way. Uh, he says, but I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself, if only I might, I might finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And so that's kind of my life verse here in pastoral ministry of music, in using music as a tool for this day is to say, Lord, I hope I finish the course faithfully. Yeah. I want to be able to testify of God's grace to anyone that I would meet to sing all matters of songs 
And, and ha whether they're a relational song, whether they may be a love song, whether they're a song for my granddaughter, uh -huh. a commentary on the culture of the times, a word of exhortation to the church or a song of praise and worship, mm -hmm. may it be done to his glory for his divine purposes. Yes. And may we not make money a prerequisite for ministry. Amen. And uh, I would covet your prayers to that yes. end. For sure. We usually like to close our show in prayer, but I'm going to ask you if you feel comfortable, brother, to close in prayer, maybe with those concerns that you were talking about, then I'm going to pray for you that God would open a door, uh, not again, not for money, not notoriety, as we said, but with this new upcoming album and that people's hearts would be changed uh, and that Lord, the Lord would give you um, a platform for that. So, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. okay. Father God, we thank you for this time together on Zoom and on Facebook. Yes. Uh, thank you for the chance here to speak with a brother in Christ and to be uh, honored to be a part of his program. Lord, as a, as a pastor, as a brother in Christ, as a Christian, uh, as a husband, as a grandfather, uh, you know, as a friend, Lord, I just pray for uh, those of us listening here tonight that we would our hearts would be kept faithful, uh, that we would not cave in to the spirit of the age or, or the day in which we live, but that we would be transformative uh, in living our lives for you. We know the power is in the gospel. May we be men and women that would read your word faithfully every day and then implement it at the places where we work, in our families, uh, in our churches, even where we uh, vacation or our places of recreation, whether it be in Florida at a beach or at a coffee shop, whether it be up north in some other venue, whether they're enjoying the so snow or enjoying the sand down here, we pray, Lord, that we would be salt and light to this time. Amen. We do live in an age of rage, mm. and we would ask that we would be peacemakers, yes. salt and light to this generation. And Lord, we know that every generation has prayed this, but we prayed as well. Maranatha, come quickly. Yes. And if uh, you do not come in our time, may we be found faithful till we're home with you and uh, that you would preserve our kids and grandkids as future voices for the kingdom. Uh, we love you. Thank you for this time together. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, I pray for Steve. Uh, Lord, that this, uh, this new album, after uh, a lengthy hiatus, uh, God, you've, uh, you've put it on his heart for a number of years. He and Tim mine have worked together on it. Lord, I pray that you would take it where you want it to be, Lord, that people would uh, have it in their hearts. Uh, it's not something, uh, again, Lord, that he wants to make a name for himself. Lord, uh, we don't even need to say that now. He just wants to use it as a gift. Uh, for you, Lord, that other people would be pricked in their consciences about the times that we're living in an age of rage, but also be encouraged and to be blessed, to be built up in the most holy faith by uh, hearing music and listening to lyrics that would lift their soul and their spirit up. Thank you, Father. The blessing, Steve, all these many years and all the ways that you have. Continue to do that, Father. And I pray that you bless our time and the next time we can meet. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, and one final thought. We say yeah. this at our church a lot. We may be great sinners, but Jesus is a greater Savior. Amen. I like yeah. that one. So listen, tentatively, and we can text later, um, What, what maybe we could do next Thursday, 730, and talk about how your church never shut down for COVID. Oh, let's do it. We, I'd do love that. to have that conversation okay. with you. Thank Excellent. you so much. Well, folks, if you're hey. listening now, Steve Camp, next week at 730. Uh, Perfect. Time, just another Thursday. All right. Grace and peace, man. Thank God you so you. much. See God you. bless you, too.